Hey team, Connor here from HPA. Welcome to this week's webinar. Before we get into that, we'll do a little bit of a shop update or what's happening around HPA at the moment. Um, we'll just jump onto my laptop screen. I've got a few photos here from our uh, race car, the SR8, well, what we call the SR86. It's a Toyota GT86 with the SR20 VET engine, and I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this by now, but we use this to race in our local uh, South Island of New Zealand endurance racing series. Uh, this year it's not competing in that series. We're doing a little bit of a refresh, uh, tidying up, uh, giving the engine a bit of a birthday, uh, and tidying up the interior and a few other things. Um, and along with a few changes to the braking system as well. So Brandon has been uh, working on a lot of this work and I've got a little photo here just looking down through the windscreen, well, which isn't there at the moment. Uh, we've got a new carbon fiber center console going in here, which Brandon has uh, made himself, molded up. Um, you can see here the adjustable anti-roll bars that were part of last year's project as well. Um, but one of the uh, major changes that happened, which you can see here, is the addition of the Bosch Motorsport ABS unit. Um, so that's just being, well, last week Brandon has been plumbing that with all the brake lines. A little bit of a different view of it there. So all stainless steel uh, 3 16 brake lines. I think they're 3 16 I'd assume so. Um, looking really nice and that's just sitting on that center console under the dash and then we can see here the other addition that we've made is the move from the factory style um, yeah the factory pedal box with the uh, brake booster to a motorsport style pedal box with a brake bias bar as well and this is a Perusic engineering unit out of Australia really nice piece of kit uh, a little bit of a different view. These are just some photos I took of my phone uh, before I got here on my phone before I got here. And Brandon's just 3D printed up these fittings here just as a test fit before he orders them um, from uh, Europe. And yeah, they're just some 3D prints on our 3D printer. Um, he just modeled these in CAD just to make sure they're going to fit. So they are fittings for, obviously, out of the master cylinders for the brake lines to go to the Bosch uh, ABS unit. And also they have the brake pressure sensors there as well. And the rear one will also be used as a uh, brake light switch. So um, another part of this project, Andre has been doing a refresh on the SR20 VET engine. Um, just a, uh, yeah, basically a bit of a refresh, no major changes, um, but one that you'll notice here is our valve cover. So this valve cover is a project I've been working on in Fusion 360, um, and we got this machined out of billet. So pretty impressive piece with a lot and uh, big design process involved. And this will be coming soon as a worked example to our CAD course. Um, so you'll be able to see what it takes to go from the start stage all the way through to a finished product on um, yeah, a part like that. Um, and we've had it, and it uh, that was CNC machined by Bruce at 513 Fab here in New Zealand. And then we've had it uh, hard anodized black because as much as it looked really nice in the raw machine finish, it just would not hold up to... Um, the abuse of motorsport, especially in endurance racing, by the time some oil and coolant is spilled on that and it goes through heat cycles, it's, it's pretty easy to stain them and they get scratched up. So hard anodized black. Um, and yeah, like I said, that will be coming soon as a worked example to our CAD course. I'll just flick over here. So in terms of our giveaway uh, this week, well, these two weeks, um, you have eight days left to enter here, and that's for the Holly Sniper EFI conversion kit. Um, so yeah, eight days left to enter, and I'll get Brody to drop the uh, link to that in the chat, and you'll be able to follow that and enter. There's no purchase required or anything like that. And that also comes with a suite of HPA training courses as well. Um, but it is just at hpacademy.com forward slash giveaway. And I also have that unit here. So if we just jump under the overhead camera, this is the 
throttle body itself. So this is designed to be able to convert uh, older, uh, typically American, I'd say, uh, V8s that are carbureted to fuel injection. Um, so this throttle body replaces the carburetor. It has the injectors built in here and the throttle position sensor there as well. And probably won't be able to see, but if I open the butterfly down there in the bores, there's a whole bunch of kind of small ports around the side where I assume the ejector, injectors flow the fuel to. Um, and along with that, because this is the full conversion kit, um, you'll also get the display or control unit as well, which simply plugs in. Uh, everything's obviously designed nice and easy, just connects together. Um, and this can go on your car and you can control it from here and I'm sure see uh, some of the data as well. Um, and that comes also with the PDM unit here too. And basically everything that you're going to need to do that conversion. So I think the fuel pump is included. Uh, there's a big box of parts down there. It has the fuel line, all sorts in it. Um, everything that you need to do that full conversion. So definitely worth heading along to the HPA giveaway page and entering for your chance to win that. Um, so just moving along to our YouTube channel, or more specifically in this case, the Tuned In podcast. Um, the other week, uh, this went up a few days ago, four days ago, uh, Andre had Bruno from Optimum G on the podcast. And this one piqued my interest a little bit because uh, I had used Optimum G very briefly uh, with, along with Sam on our CRX project when we just had a little look at analysing some of the suspension changes we we're going to make. But for any of those who aren't familiar with Optimum G, Optimum G uh, provides uh, services as a consultant and they also have software um, which is what we used and they also uh, do run seminars um, so you can learn a lot of this information for yourself with the vehicle, uh, vehicle dynamics engineering. And um, what really piqued my interest about this, having used the software, and uh, I'm not a vehicle dynamics engineer myself, but it is really straightforward to use um, and quite user friendly. And it may seem like an overwhelming topic, uh, vehicle dynamics simulation, but the software makes it really usable and it's actually usable right down to an enthusiast level with uh, street cars. Or, or grassroots track day cars. Um, so I'd recommend heading over and having that, uh, giving that a look if you're interested in setting up your suspension, suspension de design or uh, vehicle dynamics in general. It's a really interesting one. So just moving on from there. Um, in terms of other things coming up, we've, like I said, we've got the CAD uh, worked example for the billet valve cover coming up, but we're also working on the uh, motorsport braking course at the moment. So motorsport braking systems and everything that entails, or performance ones, it's all uh, useful for any level of uh, performance application. Um, so I'll just play this here, it's kind of the hot takes video of what's in that course while I'm explaining the course a little bit more. So. At the start of this course, we look into the fundamentals of brake system operation, the fundamental principles that the braking system works on to give you a solid uh, understanding of everything that goes into that. And from there, we move into the uh, all of the components that are used or could be used in a motorsport braking system uh, or a factory braking system for that matter. We move on to talk about measurements that you can take to analyse your braking system. So that's uh, temperature, pressure and position measurements. That's position of the master cylinder or the pedal usually. Um, allowing you to give you the tools to be able to analyse your braking system and find the factual information on, on how it is performing. Uh, and then from there we move into brake system design. So how to design a complete system either from scratch or understand the system as a whole. So when you are making changes to your braking system, you're going to be under able to understand the effect that that has on the system um, and other things that might need to be changed to correct that. Um, and then from there we're also going to move on to the practical skills, um, things like brake 
break bedding, uh, break bleeding, and so on. Uh, and changing master cylinders, uh, choosing calipers, and things like that. So quite a lot of information in that course. And I just want to have a little look here at our brake system calculator. So this is part of the brake system design part, uh, brake system design part of the course. Um, and this calculator I've developed, um, and it'll allow you to enter. Uh, this will be available eventually online, but uh, as a spreadsheet version like this along with the course, but it will allow you to input your vehicle data uh, into these first blue sections here. So that's everything uh, around the, the dimensions of the vehicle, how much it weighs, its weight distribution, things like aerodynamics. Um, you've got tyre widths in there, and then the size of the braking package, things like uh, the brake caliper size, the, the size of the pistons and the disc as well, including the pad compounds used. And then there's some intermediate calculations that happen in here, which if you take the course uh, will become of more interest to you, but nothing really we need to do with that. And then the calculator will recommend the master cylinder sizes to make sure the bias uh, sits within the target or what would be suitable for your vehicle. Um, but it also allows you to play with different master cylinder sizes um, and also experiment with different brake package sizes, so size of the disc, different calipers, things like that, um, different pedal ratios. Um, and then you can, it will give you some warnings if there's something that looks out of the ordinary. And then this brake bias plot down here is a really good visual aid for understanding how the brake system kind of stacks up. Just a really quick explanation of this. Um, the blue line through the middle here is what our brake bias is actually doing. Um, and this varies with the uh, deceleration of the vehicle. And then anything in this red area here is too much rear bias and anything up in this gray area would be too much forward bias. So basically what you're aiming for, this will make a lot more sense obviously if you do the course, is to end up in the green area in the middle here and this is the bias using a proportioning valve in this case kind of tracking that ideal situation up to a pulling about 1.2 to 1.3 g's um, and then these two other blue lines there would just show you the window for adjustment you'd have if you were using a, a brake bias bar in a motorsport style pedal box so we're hoping to have that course out in the next uh, month or so um, so keep your eyes out for that if that's something that you're interested in. If you like that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.